thanks very much. Uh, thanks to everyone here for uh, asking me to speak, and uh, thanks to you guys for sticking around, uh, even if it's only for the prize draw. Um, yeah, I said to Scott, I promise not to keep you guys long. I know you've got buses to catch, and uh, also probably don't want to listen to someone they've never heard of. Um, but I've been uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, I've been lucky enough to to enjoy a profession, uh, enjoy a career even in in professional sport. Um, which, even though I'm not a teacher, puts me in the same uh, ballpark as you guys uh, being employed in, in the sort of sporting arena. Um, but a huge influence on my decision, well, my ability to, to be able to make the decision to go into pro, to pro sport was in school, uh, in particular in secondary school. Um, what I've noticed, though, and what I'm sure, what I gather you guys have noticed, I'm sure you've noticed anyway, is that the students you're teaching today are not like the students you were when you were young. That they're not interested, not as interested in in being outdoors and being active. There's a lot more things that they can other, they could do: uh, computers, iPhones, PlayStation, um, and so forth. Um, so I want to talk about what, like, whether that problem does actually exist, and how all of us in the room can help uh, get things back on track. Um, and I think the message really should be that uh, you guys, as PE teachers, as very good PE teachers, I'm sure, um, are bigger role models for your students than you, you'd even realize. So uh, briefly about me, uh, I'm not a PE teacher, so I'm not about to tell you uh, or even try to tell you how to do your jobs. Um, I'm lucky enough to represent Hong Kong uh, as my country in a sport that I love. And uh, I've been lucky enough to, in the course of it, stay fit um, and uh, be active and travel the world. Um, we, were, we, we had a tournament in Hong Kong last week, but before that we were in Sri Lanka, um, Uruguay, and we've, we've traveled the world, which is great, and we get paid as well, which is brilliant. Um, as I said, sport in school was a huge influence for me. Uh, my parents always tried to keep my sister and I active. We tried to get us to, uh, to be outdoors and play outdoors, but of course, the most of the time I spent uh, where I could have been doing active things was with my mates in school. And I went to a primary school here in Hong Kong where most of the students weren't that keen on, on being outdoors and being active. Most of them went to Kumon, which is an after-school maths club. Uh, and I was the only one that didn't do that, so I wasn't cool. Um, my sister, as so I wasn't the fittest of kids, and my sister used to uh, refer to my favorite um, Liverpool jersey as my fat shirt, which used to uh, make me upset. Um, I remember winning uh, a race at the KCC Sports Day, and the lady, before giving me my prize, leant over to her, uh, her colleague and said, I didn't think such a fat boy would win. So um, that was, that was it, <clears throat> the unnamed school, um, which has changed since then, I'm sure. Uh, but we, we, we had a school song that we'd sing in assembly. It was called Do Your Best. And I still remember the words, because they were uh, indelibly scratched into my brain. Um, the words were, uh, although it's good to do your best, there has to be a loser. Please give a thought to all the rest, but go ahead and do your best. Whatever kind of race you're in, remember, you can't always win. Um, yeah, something like that. Um, and I remember, I remember singing that at home, and my parents went bonkers, because they, they always tried to get my sister and I to do the best we possibly could in whatever we did, even if it didn't mean winning. But So the idea of... Uh, you know, slowing down at the end of a race to let, let someone, someone else win didn't sit too well with them. Um, I, I went to KG5, King George V School. Um, I went to KG5 for secondary school, and that, that changed things. Um, there were a few boys who went to KG5 who went on to play rugby for, for Hong Kong in the sevens. Uh, Ricky Chook, um, Andy Chambers. I noticed there's a few people around here um, who probably know them. Um, and they were a positive influence on, on, on everyone that played rugby, everyone that did sport in school. Um, but I think it goes without saying that none more so than, uh, he's now head of PE, I think, still there, um, Charlie Riding. He was a PE teacher uh, when we were there, and he had played in, in, uh, in the Sevens for Hong Kong. Uh, but he was a sort of a, an energetic guy, for those that don't know him, an energetic guy and uh, someone who was really into teaching, really into learning, and. and Wanted, wanted us, well, it appeared to us at least that he wanted us to do well. So, of course, all the girls fancied him, all the boys wanted to be him, and um, we, he was a positive role model for us as a PE teacher. 
I mean, if you're a colleague of his or if you have been a colleague of his, you probably think that's just a load of bullshit. But as kids, we, we looked up to him. Um, you know, we thought he was great. So, like I said, the message is, you know, you're a bigger role model for your students than you really believe you are. Um, like a lot of you, I'm sure, we would go after school, get onto the pitch, play football until we were kicked off. Uh, if we got to school early, we'd get off the school bus and start kicking a ball around, start playing touch rugby, whatever it was to be active, to do those kind of things. But like I said, it, it seems that things have changed or have begun to change since then. Um, so I had a little look into it for preparing for this talk. Um, they've done uh, studies in the UK, the States, even in Hong Kong, about how much time kids spend um, outdoors. And excuse me if you've, you've gone over this this weekend. I'm, I'm sure you all know this anyway. But um, they, they split the findings into generations. So they looked at sort of what they call our grandparents' generation. Then they said our parents' generation. And then the kids of today, that generation. And they asked them, how much time did you spend outdoors as a kid? And the grandparents' generation would say three or more hours a day. On average, they would spend active out, outdoors. So whatever that meant. I could be playing sport. That could be just walking to and from school. Um, our parents' generation said two and a half hours a day on average. So still a lot, quite similar result. Um, As these studies showed, as, as these studies showed, was uh, there's better things to do now, more interesting things to do. Play PlayStation, play computer, or apparently better things to do. Um, the second reason is that parents' concern about crime and safety, so worried about their kids getting uh, abducted or um, falling out of a tree and breaking their arm, things like this. And the third reason is um, that parents sadly don't have time to play with their kids, and the time they do have. They want their kids to be studying. So, I mean, to me, and I'm sure to you guys, that that's all very sad and quite a shock. Um, and the implications of it, we, we don't really know, to be honest, because the current generation of adults played a lot outdoors when they were young. Um, I mean, in Hong Kong, uh, the type 2 diabetes rate has increased tenfold since 1997. Um, obesity rates in local schools have increased 7 or 8% since 1998. Um, and there's generally less interest in being outdoors and being fit. Um, I would say, I would argue that the three reasons I gave you that kids don't want to go outdoors and play don't apply to PE because you can't, you can't get on your iPhone whilst you're in class. Or hopefully, hopefully you can't. Um, you, you certainly can't go and do other homework because you're in class anyway and you're supervised by a responsible adult, right? Um, so how do we fix the problem? Uh, there's not enough time. I mean, I was speaking to, to Dom and some of the other guys. Um, there's not enough time for you guys to influence the kids just in the course of, of a lesson. Uh, and there's not enough time for kids to go to a sporting event and see people playing at, at any level and be inspired by that, because that happens you know, once a year, twice a year. For PE, it happens you know, for, I think, is it 80, 80 minutes a week uh, for, for, this, for the school there? Um, so you guys have to be role models. You have to continue to be role models for your kids. And um, from the guys who are lucky enough to play for their country or play for any team, they have to continue to be role models for their kids. 
Um, an interesting story. We we played this tournament last weekend in Hong Kong. Um, when we finished, uh, even though we'd lost, we were walking around the stadium, and one of the ball boys came up to me and asked if he could u- if he could have my socks. And we'd been playing all day, uh, and the so- I was going to throw them out; they were rubbish. Um, but he wanted them, and he wanted to show off to his mates. So I said, "Well, if you can if you can follow me around the rest of the stadium, I'll take them off. I'm not taking them off here." So he did. He followed me around for about 20 minutes, and I took them off, gave them a pair of stinking rugby socks, and he ran away with them. He was so happy. And it surprises me now, even, even after a long time um, doing it, that, that kids will be so happy to get something like that because they do look up to, surprisingly, they do look up to, to us, and they do look up to people like you. Like I said, with, with my experience and my PE teachers, um, you know, unlike the sort of socks and sandals biology teachers, as far as teachers go, PE teachers are it, right? You guys are the coolest as it, as it comes. Um, and the influence that you have is beyond what you teach in class. And I'm sure you've learned a whole load of ways to, to, to improve your lessons, to come up with new things to do. But I would say try and aspire to inspire your kids to, to want to lead an active lifestyle. And a lot, of the, a lot of that will just be in copying you guys. Um, they'll see what you do, how you dress, how you carry yourselves, and they'll want to be like that because they want to be like you. Um, it's not your role to create professional sportsmen. It's not your role to create the next like Usain Bolt or anyone like that, but just create someone that when they get home from school, they don't want to sit in and play PlayStation. They want to go outside and kick a ball, even against the wall for half an hour. Um, you guys are all obviously excellent PE teachers. I have to say that, but you're obviously excellent. You wouldn't have come all the way here if, if you weren't. And uh, you're all bigger role models to your students than, than you'd, re- you'd realise. Um, if there is a real problem with kids today and how much they play outdoors, then it's a responsibility of everyone in this room to start changing it. And uh, really to, uh, to, get off, to get off their iPhones and go outside and play. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you.